boys' anti-tank rifle. The boys' anti-tank rifle was a man-portable rifle that could put a slug into an enemy tank at long range. It was also crushingly heavy, at over 35 pounds, and had a severe recoil. Lamette Revolver New Orleans gunsmith Jean Lamette cooked up the Lamette Revolver for the Confederacy to use in the Civil War. It was a regular old revolver, except for one special feature, a shotgun slapped underneath it. Lamette and several Confederate generals envisioned the revolver as a close quarters cavalry weapon, but a variety of factors led to the weapon never seeing extensive use. The Union blockade of New Orleans meant not many made at the front lines. It also used non-standard ammunition, was difficult to reload. Less than 3,000 guns made it into the hands of Confederate soldiers. CZ-38 The Czech CZ-38 pistol entered service in 1938, and virtually all of them were snapped up by Nazi Germany. The weapon never saw extensive service for a very good reason, since it was too heavy and bulky for infantry use, firing a Nidum bullet with little stopping power. Arsenal F-2011 Gion Made by Arsenal Firearms, the gun is basically two 1911 style pistols welded together for extra firepower and coolness. Released in 2015, the F-2011 didn't win any points with gun enthusiasts, who felt the bulky weapon was virtually impossible to shoot, hard to use, awkward, inaccurate, and hugely overpriced. FB-45 Liberator The theory behind the Liberator was a noble one. It was designed to be a cheap, one-shot pistol that could be dropped in huge numbers behind enemy lines to be used by partisans and resistance fighters, who could sneak up on an enemy soldier, kill them, and take their presumably better weapon. In practice, though, the Liberator was unpopular with high-ranking military brass, who authorized only a few thousand of the guns that were made to be distributed. The weapon proved clumsy, inaccurate, and was so hard to reload that users were meant to throw it away rather than try. Ross Rifle Developed in Canada during the turn of the 20th century, the Ross Rifle was a sturdy, bolt-action rifle good for target shooting and hunting. What it was not good for was close quarters combat in filthy trenches, due to an almost pathological tendency to jam if it got the slightest bit dirty. The rifle's bolt also had a nasty habit of not locking when reassembled after cleaning, but because of a design flaw, the weapon would often jam. It was so bad that Canadian troops would often discard their Ross rifles for British Lee and Field rifles taken from casualties. The Ross was retired in 1916. Gyrojet The Gyrojet was a solution in search of a problem. A family of pistols and light rifles made available in the 60s. The Gyrojet didn't fire bullets, but instead small rockets that theoretically would increase in velocity after being shot. In practice, while being light and having little recoil, the weapons fouled easily and were inaccurate. The Army explored everything from gyrojet pistols to machine guns, but ditched the design after making just 1,000 pistols. A few were used in Vietnam, and later appeared in a variety of spy movies. Roast Lemon Warfare 
a two-man flamethrower used by the German Empire in World War I. The Gross Plumbing Warfer was fairly effective when it was used in World War I. But once British and French troops figured out the weapon's weakness, carrying it became a death sentence. French and English soldiers could easily identify German flame troops and attack them before they could set up the flamethrowers. The weapon's females were also highly flammable and vulnerable to explosion. Ring of Fire Guns Not so much one model of pistol as much as a type. They were cheaply made, fragile, and inexpensive pistols meant for concealed carry but often suffered from jams, poor accuracy, lack of durability, and accidental discharges. They were used in a number of robberies and shootings. A cotter of gun makers who cranked out these pistols were mostly based in the South Florida and Los Angeles areas. Not volley gun. What's better than one shotgun firing seven times? One seven-barrel shotgun firing once? At least that's the theory behind the not volley gun a massive flintlock rifle used by the Royal Navy in the early days of the Napoleonic Wars. The gun was to be used at close range against enemy ships preparing to board you, with the thought that seven barrels firing at the same time would cut a devastating swath through boarding troops. In practice, the knock was almost impossible to aim and recoiled so hard that it would badly injure the shooter. Gun. Possibly the world's first automatic weapon, the Puckle gun was designed in 1718 by James Puckle, a British lawyer and inventor. Essentially a huge revolver on a tripod, the Puckle was meant to pacify angry native populations. Instead, it was clumsy, difficult to aim and ill-suited for warfare of the time. Likely the strangest thing about the Puckle was its ability to fire a square bullet, designed solely to be fired at Turks. Why design a bullet just for shooting at one particular religion? Because square bullets were thought to cause more damage, and would teach the Turks the benefits of living under Christian civilization. Needless to say, the bullets were impossible to aim, and like the Puckle gun itself, were a failure written off as a historical oddity. Davy Crockett Seeking a way to give infantry the power of killing millions, the U.S. developed the Davy Crockett Ultra Close Range Nuclear Recoilless Rifle. It was hard to use and inaccurate, but would theoretically form a first line of defense against Soviet tanks. Commanders were less than enthusiastic about them, since they'd escalate a conventional conflict into a nuclear one and they'd likely kill a lot of U.S. troops as well. Nonetheless, the U.S. Army manufactured over 2,000 Davy Crockett's and deployed them from 1961-1971. Northover Projector with the looming threat of German invasion, Great Britain needed a cheap and easily produced way to arm Home Guard reservists with weapons that could stop German armor. So, Winston Churchill authorized the production of the Northover Projector, a simple anti-tank gun. But the Northover was a difficult weapon to use. It was heavy and hard to move, and gave off so much smoke when fired that its position was instantly identifiable. 18,000 Northovers were made, but few ever made it into combat. Lassetti Model 1910 An Italian World War I sidearm, the Glycenti was designed to upgrade turn-of-the-century revolvers used by officers. Instead, it was a mess. It was designed to fire the weak seven. 
65mm bullet, but higher ups wanted it to fire the more powerful Nidum. When the bigger bullets were forced into the glycenti, they would often blow the gun apart due to its weak frame and poor construction. The pistols also wore out quickly jammed frequently and had little stopping power. Many officers ditched them and secretly hung on to their revolvers. Cromwell. The problem of how to shoot around a corner has plagued soldiers since the invention of the gun. Nazi Germany thought they'd figured out a solution with the Kronloff, a curved barrel attachment for the MP44 assault rifle. Theoretically, the attachment could send bullets from a covered position at a high rate, but in practice the bullets often came out at weird angles, shattering the attachment and turning it into a shotgun that could easily kill its user. The barrels also wore out quickly, often after just a few hundred rounds. 2mm Calibri A tiny pistol that fired a bullet about half an inch long. The Calibri German for Hummingbird was patented by an Austrian watchmaker in 1910 to the ultimate concealed self-defense weapon. In practice, it was so small that handling and firing it were next to impossible. If you did manage to get a round off, you probably were better off delivering a swift kick to the shin. The bullet had no spin and no velocity. Calibri pistols are now collector's items. Nambu Type 94 Pistol while popular with Japanese servicemen, the Nambu Type 94 was plagued with a number of design problems. It was difficult to reload, and had delicate parts that would break easily when being disassembled. The magazine would also fall out if the pistol was jammed in a holster too hard. But by far the worst problem with the gun was that because of its design, it could accidentally fire without pulling the trigger if tapped on the side too hard. Chachet. Soldiers in World War I needed light, powerful machine guns that could be easily moved during attacks and provide copious firepower for defense. Unfortunately for French troops, they had the Chachet light machine gun. Its construction was so shoddy that parts weren't interchangeable, while the distinctive magazine had large holes that easily became caked in mud, making the weapon useless. It jammed easily, overheated, and was impossible to aim. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below, and also thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care! Bye!